In September of 2020, NVIDIA launched the RTX 3078 gigabyte for $500. A few months later, the Radeon RX 6800 16 gigabyte became available for $650. Though neither were truly widely available for anywhere near their MSRPs for a couple of years, thanks to the chip shortage. In late 2022, when prices finally fell enough to make purchasing a new GPU make sense, the RTX 3070 and RX 6800 both landed between five and $600. So consumers had to make the difficult choice on whether to go team red or team green. The debate since the release of these GPUs has been whether buying the eight gigabyte Nvidia card over the 16 gigabyte AMD card would come back to bite you. And as new game releases have naturally gotten more intensive and VRAM heavy, it's been more and more popular to go back and revisit this debate. So today we'll take a look at some games that were released around the same times as these cards were, as well as more recent titles to see how time has treated these cards since their release. And if you're wondering where to pick these cards up for yourself, you should definitely check out today's video sponsor, Jawa. Looking for a new GPU, but don't know where to start? Maybe you're liking one of the cards you're currently watching a video about? Yeah, I see you. Luckily, today's sponsor, Jawa, and the number one gaming marketplace to buy and sell both new and used gaming here, is here to help. Jawa prides itself on being the go-to community for gamers to buy and sell parts, with the marketing being in the hands of the people building the PCs and playing the games. The prices are reasonable and the community is strong. Whether you're looking for a nice 3070, which we easily found on Jawa, or a 6800, which we also found on Jawa, you're in the right place. With Jawa, all transactions are secure with both buyer and seller protection policies, and they even offer verification for sellers to further increase security, being vetted by a member of the Jawa team. Both cards we looked at, along with every other listing, is manually reviewed by Jawa members to ensure quality and accuracy. Plus, if you already have a GPU, you can trading your card directly to Jawa and put that value towards your upgrade. If upgrading just your card isn't enough, we also found a full PC with a 6800 XT. So if you don't want to worry about putting a system together yourself, Jawa has you there too. You can check out Jawa via the link in the description below and get started upgrading today. Keep in mind, starting November 6th through the end of the year, Jawa is offering some great deals. Be sure to create an account and subscribe for flash sales, giveaways, and deals this holiday season. And keep a special eye out November 22nd through the 29th for incredible deals on builds, components, and peripherals for Jawa's deals of the Day. Kicking things off with one of the most anticipated releases of 2020, we're looking, of course, at Cyberpunk 2077, which unsurprisingly remains one of the most popular games on Steam. With the RTX 3070, it's clear that it doesn't quite have the oomph to run in ultra settings or enable many ray tracing settings without a serious hit to playability. This works out in its favor with VRAM usage, as the high preset at native 1440p were safely within that 8GB limit and averaging a healthy 75fps, with great 1% and 0.1% low performance. The RX 6800 fared better, but it probably wasn't much to do with the VRAM, as the 6000 series does have some great rasterization performance. It was about 10% ahead of the 3070. And as we're sure many of you know, 2020 also marked the beginning of a new era for Sony as they finally began porting many of their popular first-party titles to PC. This may honestly be the largest reason the RTX 3070 8 gigabyte sometimes looks so obsolete. Just about every game Sony spits out onto Steam since 2020 have been absolute VRAM hogs. So naturally, we're going to throw these cards in the ring with some of these games as we progress. Just before these cards came to market, Horizon Zero Dawn was released on Steam. Though the game first came out on PS4, it won't go easy on your PC. At 4K Ultra, the RTX 3070 does manage an average FPS of 66, but it does illustrate some occasional stuttering in the lows. It also suffered from the occasional texture pop-in, but it really wasn't a bad experience on the 8GB card by any means. The RX 6800 also experiences similar traversal stutters and only managed a marginal average FPS improvement, but we didn't notice any texture pop-ins with this card. The next year, in 2021, Far Cry 6 launched to become one of the first games outside of Cyberpunk to bring 8GB cards to their knees at 4K. However, at 1440p, you can crank the settings, enable ray tracing, and run at 100% resolution scaling while still averaging close to 90 FPS with the RTX 3070. But the second you want to play at 4K, you're reminded you're stuck in 2016 with just half the 
the VRAM that Radeon offers. The RX 6800 achieves an impressive 101 FPS at 1440p and significantly outperforms the VRAM limited RTX card at 4K, delivering a tenfold increase in frame rates. This highlights how a small increase in manufacturing costs can lead to substantial performance gains later on down the line. In early 2022, Dying Light 2 released, but in much the same fashion as Cyberpunk 2077, the RTX 3070 struggles too much for full 4K, so we're stuck with 1440p. In doing so, we were able to achieve a 76 FPS average with very respectable frame time performance and VRAM usage. Despite this, the RX 6800 still runs away with a 20% advantage at 92 FPS. Among the several PlayStation ports added to Steam in 2022, one of the more demanding remains the Spider-Man series. Though, Spider-Man Miles Morales spared our 8GB 3070 from too much struggle as it managed 67 FPS at 1440p, very high preset with high ray tracing settings also enabled. The RX 6800 came out swinging with an 18% improvement to the average and around 40% to the lows. VRAM usage was over 10 gigabytes on the Radeon GPU, so it seems it was able to overcome its ray tracing disadvantage with that extra VRAM. In 2023, Returnal came to the PC. This is a game that gets pretty close to consuming an 8 gigabyte VRAM budget, but during our benchmarks, the 3070 did, in fact, hold up quite well. At 1440p, epic preset with no ray tracing enabled, it soared to an 80 FPS average with reasonable frame time performance. Enabling ray tracing was still not enough to fully saturate our frame buffer, but it did drag our average down to 58 FPS. For gits and shiggles, we also tried 4K epic, but without ray tracing, and the 3070 still mustered 45 FPS without major stuttering. The RX 6800 only nabbed a small victory at both 1440p and 4K without ray tracing. With ray tracing enabled, it's probably not too surprising that the 3070 managed to take the lead by about 10%. Moving away from PlayStation games for a moment, we'll turn to Hogwarts Legacy from Warner Bros. This is another game that's pretty tough at 4K, so we stuck with 1440p high settings to pull a 68 FPS average with okay lows. The RX 6800 took a pretty commanding lead in this title, grabbing about a 26% advantage for average frame rate. With The Last of Us Part 1, it's looking like 2023 officially marks the point where the 3070 begins to struggle at full 1440p, never mind 4K. It took dragging things down to the medium preset at 1440p to break 60 FPS, with high settings looking more like the low 50s. The RX 6800 ran away with a 30 to 40% lead on medium settings and 60 or so percent lead at high. The biggest performance gap is in the 0.1% lows, as the 3070 clearly micro stutters much more than the RX 6800. VRAM usage did cross 8 gigabytes, so it's not a big surprise. In 2024, Helldivers 2 crashed onto the scene, but spared our hardware to some extent. The 3070 is able to break 60 FPS at full 1440p ultra settings, and the RX 6800 couldn't push much higher, as it's only a few FPS ahead. In the Final Fantasy 16 demo, the 3070 really struggled. As it is now, you may need to drop to 1080p to see a 60 FPS average, as we were only netting 55. The RX 6800, on the other hand, runs much better at 75 FPS average, giving it a 40 to 50% lead. Rounding the benchmarks out with God of War Ragnarok, we'll first take a look at 4K medium settings to see that both the 3070 and the 6800 end up around the mid 60s on average. The frame time performance though is 15 to 19% better for the RX 6800, which should come at no surprise. It's a similar story at 1440p, where we see the performance gap narrow, but still hand the victory to Radeon in frame time consistency. If we average all of our results, the RX 6800 ends up outputting 20% better averages, 25% better lows, and 30% better 0.1% lows. So what's the conclusion? Well, it's clear to see that the most demanding games do often prefer Team Radeon between these two GPUs. Admittedly, despite having half the memory, the 3070 still performs quite well. You may just need to lower the settings a notch relative to what you would use with the 6800. And given that the prices were about equal when you made your decision originally between these two cards, the RX 6800 would have been the wiser choice way back when. But if you're someone looking on the used market trying to decide which to spring for, you've got a different choice to make right now. The RX 6800 is selling on Jawa for $300 to $350. Thankfully, the RTX 3070 is selling closer to $270. 
Those are pretty fair prices for both of these, to be honest. But it might probably be worth screening for an RX 6800 or 6800 XT if your budget allows. In any case, we're hoping to see the VRAM wars end as it's just silly watching otherwise good hardware be held back by a small cost-saving decision. But thankfully, there are modders out there who can put 16 gigabytes on the 3070 and alleviate some of these woes. Obviously, we don't know what the future holds or what future games are going to look like on these GPUs, how GTA 6 will hold up on them, for example. But it is clear that as the years have progressed, the last half decade since these GPUs have come out, that the extra VRAM definitely is putting AMD as looking like a fine wine choice.